Hey now, it's the Mike and JD show, and I am your host, Mike Gilbert. Uh, it's kind of a Mike and JD show. This will not be a numbered episode. This is going to be a, a, a unique, a very special episode <clears throat> because, uh, as most of you guys are aware, earlier this week on Tuesday, my son Elijah uh, entered the world. He was born six pounds seven ounces, my little guy. He was uh, he was a little bit early, uh, seventeen days early. Not too bad though. Uh, my daughter was uh, was uh, like. 10 days early so kind of right around i think my my wife just processes kids faster i don't know she's like an alien i don't i don't i don't know what's going on with her but um we were we were actually um we we're actually worried that he was going to come way earlier and uh, she was able to hold on to the little guy until uh, until it was safe and so he's out he's safe uh mom and baby are still at the hospital we had to have a c-section not to get too graphic and to get into detail or too personal but uh, I can assure you that everybody is uh, doing okay. Um, they're just going to keep them in there for a little bit longer for some uh, extra observation, and they had to run like lab tests. And uh, and we're it's a military hospital, so we had uh, we had the baby a tripler. So um, and they did a great job, by the way. But um, because we're on an island, you know, there's some like limitations with some of the labs around here. So I think they had to like ship off some samples. So anyway. Regardless, everybody's healthy, but they just might have to stay in the hospital for a little bit longer. So uh, my daughter and I have been part time in it at the hospital. So uh, we came home last night, uh, Wednesday night, and I we did our whole bedtime routine. I put her down and then uh, here I am up early before she wakes up. Uh, she'll be up in like uh, maybe an hour or so. And then I'm going to take her to school and I'm going to head over to the hospital to join uh to join my wife and my my new son so and i'll spend the day over there and then we'll do the whole thing again tomorrow but um so anyway that was a <laughs> that was a little bit of a of a boring intro uh jd was going to uh, attempt to go ahead and go live tonight and have a special guest host but the special guest host we couldn't uh couldn't lock down and then he just ended up having like a bunch of other stuff pop up so he's not gonna be able to record live and i'm like well you know i'm home uh right now i won't be home tonight when it would be time to record and if, even if i did like i'm single dad in it at the house so i wouldn't be able to do it anyway so i was like you know i'll just i'll just record something uh for uh for the voices of wrestling and then for the patreon audience and so patreon if you're here thank you very much for subscribing uh i greatly appreciate it i have another mouth to feed so that's helpful um but um, I didn't want to like not have something for you guys. So here's what's going to happen. So um, Patreon, you guys already got the content that we're going to drop today. And it's the JD and I, which we recorded on Sunday night. We recorded overtime and we did a whole special about the the Vince McMahon docuseries. So um, sun, by Sunday, JD and I both had had the opportunity to watch it. Um, and we got, it got heated between us because JD hated the thing. And I was like, I thought this thing was pretty good. <laughs> it's like, but I also don't get upset when people bullshit me. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I'm able to regulate my emotions about that stuff. It doesn't, it just doesn't upset me. In fact, I, I happen to be entertained by it. So I like it when people like, like Hogan and, and Vince and all those people that are, they're lying because I know I can tell. Uh, but I also like it when you have other people like Dave Meltzer and Bret Hart and, Tony, like all these other people at Bischoff actually calling bullshit. So that, that whole thing entertained me. And I think, uh, I think a lot of people were more upset that they didn't go into detail about the more salacious stuff um, than I was. I was just happy that they did it. So anyway, uh, we, we actually got into a pretty heated debate. And then we have to tell some fun stories. Uh, JD actually had, JD tells the story of the time he met Chris Benoit. And uh, that turns out to be a pretty funny story. So uh, stay tuned for that. So, um, yeah, so you guys listen on the Voices of Wrestling Network, and, uh, and you guys are going to get to hear that, which was, ex which was uh, on the Patreon earlier this week. Um, over time, Mike and JD discuss in the Vince McMahon docuseries. But uh, I'm not going to not give you guys some fresh content because, man, oh, man, we have been covering the AEW TV deal story for two years. It's been – it's literally been two years, like, since – I, JD and I were back on Fight Game Media, and I think we were still braced for impact, and we were discussing this freaking TV deal and what it would look like and this and that because rumors have been going around for a long time. And the whole one Bill Phil stuff and everything. Well, it's finally here. We've been covering it 
I feel like it's been almost every week now for since like the beginning of this year, but we have been covering off and on for almost two years now. And so I'm like, and the news broke yesterday while I was in the hospital. <laughs> I was like, I was like, damn it. I, I like, this is our time to shine. We need to be able to record, but you know, obviously we just couldn't. So uh, I was, I am not going to let a full week go by without discussing this with you guys. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm just going to break down, break it down right now. A uh, Patreon, I'm going to just upload this as a separate audio file. So you guys will just have that. And um, Voices of Wrestling, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about the TV deal right now. And then we're going to get right into the Vince McMahon um, docuseries, a recap from JD and I. So, so let's go ahead and discuss it. Um, so our long national nightmare is over. AEW's new TV deal with Warner Brothers Discovery officially announced. Uh, and uh, Rampage, our national nightmare is over because also Rampage got canceled. <laughs> which I, I might be the only one happy about that. I don't know why I'm happy. I never watched the thing, but I just feel like its existence was getting on my nerves. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's one of those weird things. Like, why would you be happy that something you didn't watch is no longer on TV? And I'm just like, I don't know. That's not a very mature thing to do, but I just like the fact that it was there <laughs> just annoyed me because it just feel like it felt like it was unnecessary. But um, it, you know, AEW is essentially becoming a bit of a content farm, much like WWE is. And so, um, but uh, yeah, Rampage is gone. Uh, so let me get into some of the details. So after two years of speculation, AEW officially signed a multi-year media rights deal with Warner Brothers Discovery, ending what many fans, including myself, dubbed a long national nightmare of waiting. The new deal, which sees Dynamite and Collision remaining on TBS and TNT, also brings major changes including a uh, cancellation of Rampage, AEW's third show, according to Variety. So this is where things get a little weird. So Variety, they were the first ones to announce it. So this was definitely like they were, Variety's like that, you know, Hollywood type publication. And so that's where they wanted to go there with it to get the announcement out there to, to make it seem like it was a very big deal. And it is. But according to Variety, the deal is reportedly valued at $150 million per year. But Sports Business Journal suggesting that the number is closer to 170 uh, annually. Uh, and then to add another interesting layer, Sports Business Journal is also stating that WBD will get to keep its equity stake in AEW, which um, that's never been reported. Uh, it's been rumored for years. I know they've asked Tony. He's never denied it. So I think it's pretty safe to say that, yeah, uh, WBD owns a small equity stake. And I think Dave Meltzer on his uh, podcast last night uh, stated that, that, yeah, that they do. Okay, so I, that was the first thing I wrote. But then there was an update that came out a little bit later. It said, Russell Votes is now saying that according to a, a source close to the situation, AEW's new deal with Warner with WBD is closer to $185 million a year, not the previously reported 150 or even, I guess, 170 uh, Andrew Zarian also went to Twitter and confirmed that. And then uh, I believe Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio. Now, forgive me, I have not listened yet because, uh, like I said, I just got up. But... It says that um, that he also believes that it's uh, 150 million per year, um, or I'm sorry, 185 million per year. And he, Dave, went on Wrestling Observer Radio. I'm going to pull up this Trevor Dame guy's tweet. Uh, I think Trevor Dame is like buds with some of the wrestling or the voices of wrestling dudes, but he um, he actually had like a little bit of a recap. And for the life of me, it sounded a lot like Steiner Math. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, all right. I, I I'm going to see if I could pull up his, uh, pull up his tweet, but man, oh man. So Dave says the AW deal averages out to 185 million a year over three years. It's less than 185 in year one, and it's more than 185 in year three, but altogether it's 555 million total over three years. Um, and then if uh, WBD picks up the fourth option year on this deal, when the time comes, that is a set price that would be way up. So yeah, when, typically whenever there's an option, even whenever it's like you you have signed, signed like a talent contract or like if you're in sports, like a player contract, that option year, if you pick that up, they're automatically going to get a raise. So that makes sense. Uh, Dave presumes we're not hundred percent sure, but figures it likely Given the price WBD is paying in this new deal, that any money that is made from people who buy AEW pay-per-views through HBO Max 
the that money will then go to WBD rather than AEW. So, um, and then he it, he goes on to to kind of do a full tweet stream. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. So everybody listen to Wrestling Observer Radio uh, for more of those details. Okay, let's go back to the let's go back to the story. Um, so factoring in the upcoming Shockwave show and some of their pay-per-views, uh, the total value of their deals could average around uh, 200 million per year, um, which is pretty big deal for a company that's just five years old. Along with its flagship programming staying on TBS and TNT, AEW will expand its presence by streaming live on Warner's Max platform starting in January 2025. So um, yeah, Collision and uh, Dynamite, while it's airing on TNT, will also air at the same time on max which is a hundred percent necessary for them to be able to succeed i actually think that's going to help grow the product quite a bit um i i believe so because max is you know uh, max is a pretty big like streaming service it's not as big as netflix and it's not as big as peacock but i think i think it's like right there like right there behind those two uh yeah this shift will allow us U.S. subscribers access live, access live AEW programming as well as on-demand content, opening up a new digital front for the company and ensuring broader accessibility for fans. Um, let's see. The new deal also includes enhanced distribution rights across social media pr- platforms, further integrating AEW into Warner Brothers Discovery broader content ecosystem. Starting later in 2025, AEW live pay-per-views will debut on Max at a discounted rate, offering additional premium content exclusively on the streaming service. Uh, despite the cancellation of Rampage, which will soon come off the air, AEW is moving forward with Shockwave, a new show that is currently being pitched to other networks, likely to end up on a Fox-affiliated station, possibly the Fox broadcast station itself. There Now there's rumors out there that maybe Tuesday or Thursday. Uh, I, I, If I were them, I would want Tuesday because there's the Thursday you'll be going up against NFL. Uh, and Tuesday would take you head to head with NXT, and that would be fun. That would be fun for me. But I'm curious as to what the Shockwave show would even be about. But if it's on Tuesday on Fox, it's gonna it's gonna kick uh, NXT's ass, and I think uh, I think that would make for some fun content. <laughs> so now, if it goes on Thursday, uh, you know it will. You know, people are like, oh, it's gonna go up with TNA too. It's like, no, like TNA's on access and. Uh, that wouldn't matter. People watch TNA when they get to it, so most people aren't even watching right when it airs. So it's not it's not really a big deal. Um, so Dave Meltzer added more context to the financial details, uh, noting that the deal spans three years with an f- option with fourth. Yeah, I already said that uh, with a significant price increase. Um, so yeah, that was the story. I posted that story on uh, Patreon. Then of course uh, more information has come out, but I am just so elated that this freaking tv deal was announced and i gotta give a big shout out to our boy bj bethel who has had this story on the nose from the beginning he has um he has been all over the story for months we have had him on the show several times and he has never wavered he said that max would be a part of it he you know figured it like his number was like in between 170 and like 200 which is like okay that's a wide margin but still like he nailed it 185 right he he said what you know 170 200 for for months i think like back in june and um he said when it's all figured figured in it'd be around 200 million a year and he's completely nailed it so i think everybody um everybody should give bj bethel a shout out uh andrew zarian's been all over the story for a long time too he's done a very good job and of course dave and sean ross Sapp and and everybody but i'm just so glad that it's over that we don't really have to talk about it we don't have to worry about it the grifters will find their next grift and uh i think i'm gonna have a segment coming up uh on that about what their next grift would be uh i'm pretty excited about that we'll see we'll see i th- um poor Alf- alfred my cheese board what did old cheese board say uh i he said something that it was like the saddest thing in the world like this guy's really going through it so alfred Kanua from he the guy writes for forbes he writes for like that's a big publication and he is such a loser like he is just tweeting through it um he is having a lot of trouble with this so let me let me go back to his tweet i i i quoted it 
Um, yeah, so AEW finally announced this new TV deal, setting up a beautiful utopia where wrestler will pay will skyrocket. Sadly, AEW is in a tough spot where they're making more money but are less relevant than ever. So he's like, well, they make more money, but they still suck. <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, man, it's like so that that's like the new that's the new grips. So was like, yeah, okay, they're making money, but they stink. <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's the saddest thing. Like, uh, and er I wonder what Eric Bischoff's gonna say. Uh, that that's gonna be curious to me. He's, I mean, look, not everybody's completely wrong about the state of AEW right now. Their their ratings, you know, it seemed like they're a little bit steady the last couple months, but. They have been in a more significant de decline than the rate of attrition through the loss of cable homes, right? Um, but them streaming on Max is probably going to balance that. Now, we'll probably never get those numbers. The only way we'll get those numbers is if they're like astronomical, right? And and uh, WBD wants to publicize them. But, um, you know, TV ratings have not been great. Collision and Rampage specifically, not great. You know, I know they've had spikes here and there, but for the most part, they're usually pretty bad. Ticket sales are way down year over year. Uh, all those things are absolutely true. Um, the TV show itself feels less important than ever, like as far as like a must see TV and um, making sure that I have to watch it every week. It just doesn't feel that way anymore like it used to. So I think the feeling is this, that kind of feeling is essentially gone. And they're bringing a lot of more sports entertainment elements into it, which was what they've railed against, you know, forever. So there's a lot of problems as far as what the on-screen product is, but as far as the structure of the company and the business as a whole, it's there's there's not that many. Like they're fine, they're fine. They're making so much money that you know nobody really. They're almost they're not exactly dummy proof. Like you know, look this this TV deal is three years with an option year for a fourth year, that option year could be denied and they could be out on their ass in three years. I doubt that's going to happen, but you know, I think that is going to be the next grift is that the countdown clock to when they get canceled by WBD after three years. Like, I think that's what people are going to be saying next. And again, again, look, it, it remains a possibility. Like, anything is possible, but I, I don't see it. I feel like they've been a pretty smashing success for WBD. And um, and also WBD got a little bit of a sweetheart deal here. Hold on, swig of coffee for WBD. The, it, they're, they're paying a lot of money for it, but they're getting a lot in return. And especially being able to put the stuff on Max, which is where everything's going to be going streaming-wise. And not only that, they get the, they're part owners of the company. They have an equity stake. So the more successful W or AEW is, the more successful WBD is. In return, like they have an equity stake in the company. I think, I think you know AEW got a good deal. So did WBD, and WBD gets to get out at three years of this thing goes sideways, and and that's also a good deal for for them. So, um, I think all around, like both, this one of those weird things where both sides definitely won, and um, and that's and that's cool, man. That's cool. All right, let me get to this last couple of news bits here, and then I'm gonna call it a day. So, uh, Patreon subscribers, thank you for being here, and then thank you to the Voices of Wrestling Network. I really appreciate you. And just so you guys know. Um, yeah, I'm going to be on paternity leave for, I could be on paternity leave for up to three months. I think I'm only going to take two, uh, I'll probably take two. And then, uh, that way I can bank, um, bank some time. So in the military, you get, you get 12 weeks of, of man paternity leave for, for dads and, um, you know, just for bonding time and help out mom and all that stuff. And I think it's great. And, um, it's just part of the perks of being in the military. Right. Um, but if you don't want to use it all at once, what you could do is, is you can kind of break that up over a one year period. So I think I'm going to take two and then I'm going to bank the rest of the month and kind of use it, um, over the course of the next 12 months. So, um, uh, might take a week here and there, or I might just take like a month off next spring or something, maybe do some traveling. And, uh, so we're, we're, we don't exactly know what we're going to do, but since I'm going to be on paternity leave for a little bit, um, and we're going to have the baby, the, the weekly show 
is is still going to be around. It might just look a little bit different for a while until we get our routine down. Um, but what that also means is I'm going to be home a lot. <laughs> I'm going to be going crazy. So uh, it means that there's probably going to be way more Patreon content than ever. So now is a good time to subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash the Mike and JD show. Um, I'm going to be back this coming up weekend with a TNA Q and a, uh, it won't be, it probably won't be live, but I'll probably record it Saturday or Sunday and I'll, I'll get it out and, uh, the free tier. So I actually have a free tier. I've been posting a lot of stuff, post, uh, I do some like aggregate article type stuff, but I, but I really don't like to call it aggregate cause I actually post my own opinions and aggregate articles typically don't. So I do try to make it my flavor. So I do a lot of that stuff on the free tier. And then this weekend on the free tier, the, the TNA Q and a show, uh, for brace for impact will be there. Because uh, TNA has decided to take a week off, so uh, Brace for Impact is going to look a little different this week. So uh, I'm going to do a uh, a Q&A show, and then the audio will be available for uh, everybody that is a subscriber, free or paid. Um, and then for the, those of you paid, get ready for a lot more content because I'm just going to be cranking out a ton of stuff. Um, now, before I go, let me get to some more news. Um, Shelton Benjamin debuted on AEW Dynamite last night, and it is also confirmed by Sean Ross Sapp that Bobby Lashley is all elite. He has signed a contract. He'll probably be debuting imminently. So, um, but yeah, Shelton debuted in a segment with uh, MVP last night as MVP looks to, to build up his hurt syndicate. He will be a, a part of that. So let's get to the Sean Ross sap report. Um, Another member of the Hurt Syndicate is officially all all elite. Their fightful Select Sean Rossap reported in September that MVP Shelton Benjamin Bobby Lashley were all in talks with AEW, but the deals had not been finalized. However, following MVP's debut on Grand Slam, it was confirmed by Fightful that he signed a contract. Now the same goes for Shelton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley, the latter of which has an impending debut. We're told that the three all nailed down their deals a number of weeks ago. MVP is expected to primarily serve as a manager with Shelton and Bobby Lashley wrestling. So, so there you go. So they'll be, uh, they'll be wrestling. Um, also a couple of uh, other news bits from AEW last night. Um, there was a couple of injuries. So the word making the rounds among AEW talents this morning is that Kelly Medan, who was knocked out at the end of her match with Lady Frost last night in Pittsburgh, suffered a concussion and was alert and coherent uh, after going to the hospital, which thankfully was right next to the Peterson Event Center. Madan, or Mad, I've never heard of this, before, sorry. Uh, I don't mean to disrespect her, I just don't know who it is. I don't know how to, promo- to pronounce her name. Madan was taken out of the ring on a stretcher last night, but we were told that she uh, did not suffer any other injuries. We wish her a quick, okay. And then the belief is Sammy Guevara also suffered a concussion last night against Serpentico. Um, so yeah, he was stretchered out too. He was knocked out during his match. And, uh, but looks like he is okay. So looks like he is going to be just fine too, but a couple of concussions. So, um, that is, um, that is wild. So hopefully they, um, you know, they return and that was all during the ring of honor tapings. So, um, it's kind of, kind of crazy. Oh yeah. Ring of honor, not going to be on true TV as of right now. So the kind of status quo there, that's also what Dave reported. So that just triggered my brain to make me think of it. But, yeah, guys, uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being Patreon subscribers, and thank you for supporting us on the Voices of Wrestling Network. We greatly appreciate it. And that is going to do it for me uh, on this special um, edition. Not a numbered episode, just an episode. That's going to do it for me this time. And until next time, mahalo. Uh, 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 uh. Competition starting to get thick, it's a click So I hope you watch your A-game, amen No rain from the track when we unite and spit This isn't A-game, better bring your A-game Competition starting to get thick, it's a click So I hope you watch your A-game, amen No rain from the track